Techies and techettes. Man, have we been through a roller coaster of what this update has been. 455 for me has been kind of a hot mess. Tuned to be into some issues. Ran my GPU so hot it started melting washers. Because I mean, 88 is pretty high for a more target range for the 30 series. Yes, it's kind of optimal ish. But for 20 and below, it's not. But this new update actually did reduce some of the thermals and we gained back some performance, not a lot. But we're going to be looking at some patch notes, some benchmarks. My name is Mac here at the MacGyver 7 channel. And today we're going to be doing some NVIDIA game related news to the 457.09. Link down below, you'll have these patch notes that are basically be the technical ones. The ones we're going to be looking at today are going to be the ones directly from their Reddit, which is a lot more easier to digest. Go ahead and take a look at the pure overlay before we get to some benchmarks. Now, looking at some of the stuff that they look at is the added support for the 3070 series. Yes, that are very rare supplies. A lot of people, well, are not happy about that situation. I'm not as well. We're coming down to a point that we really don't have any series, but hey, you know, I'm gonna be getting hopefully one of these eventually to kind of test them out in the 30 series land. Hopefully it will be more VRAM because there's been technical points of them saying there's no more uh, 3080 Ti's. Now it is on and they're going to be bending some cooler stuff. It's a, there's some really good work that's going to be happening in the next like probably quarter or so for unveils of NVIDIA. But for today, for as fast, what they have added for support with that, the NVIDIA control, the managed 3D settings, the Max-Q dynamic boost. The setting is renamed to just the dynamic boost. So don't get tripped if that just happens to be it. You didn't lose much. Looking at past that, we'll zoom in a little bit more to kind of see exactly what ends up happening for the game ready fixes that ends up happening with the drivers. Tuning the GPUs for the notebooks, Tuning those which happens to be the users with the black screen for as far as what ends up happening when the video and web play. Looking for For Honor in the 30 series where crashes on the desktop would be launched within the 30 series on the graphics card. Looking at the flickering portion of multiple screens on the G-Sync or the Dells as well as any kind of monitors on YouTube or Twitch with 140 hertz. Forza Mortar 7 always making the list. Crashing on desktops yet again but it's hopefully these are all fixes that i'm listing off that they basically have said hey we fix these g-sync enabled for as far as the displays some of them have on half the black screen which is an issue that they've been trying to get into which my theory is, is overheating a little bit now some of the open issues were in windows 7 they still have for the integrated graphics on some of the display screens and there'll be a list down below it it definitely does seem like there are some more stuff like star wars squadron and video control for the global 3d support vulcan warzone uh, sun set overdrive i mean a lot of games basically are still hitting this list so keep your uh notes and eyes peeled for this if you want to look down below to see if you've been afflicted by that for today let's go ahead and jump into what some really cool benchmarks are looking at time spy and that's our DirectX 12 we're going to kick it off today and kind of see that well the newer driver is well it's all right don't have the hardware accelerator on but it's okay at least me just the end of the table for as far as feeding your satisfaction with a situation of balancing out it's literally yin and yang at this point but this is the sad part this is where a lot of things get a little bit more interesting past just the time so we're going to go to the extreme now again i am testing the new windows 2000 ho and on their new quality premium ahead of time package apparently um so this is all if you are keeping up to date with your windows and you're testing all of this other stuff it will have with, yeah, I'd say probably about 2% margin sometimes, depending on what server point you are using the framework of Windows. As you'll see my mid patch notes, there are a crap load of things that can happen inside of there, let alone having a driver that puts your, well, the at a very top point that melts plastic washers. Anyways, moving on. Which I fixed, by the way, and my performance has gotten so much better. As we'll see in the Port Royale, it has stable portions of going back and forth, which I was wondering what happened last week. I was like, wait, what, what just happened here? Uh, but moving on past that is the Fire Stripe Extreme. We're going to go into a little bit more of the Direct X 11 look, if more of the hardcore overclock before we go to look at the Extreme version of Time Spy being the Direct X 12. You can see that, well, there's not really that good performance. I mean, this is kind of saying that the older driver was really outperforming it 
meaning that we've lost overclocking headroom. Doesn't surprise to see this right aside of DirectX 12 in the same situation. So anything for as far as native overclocks inside of there, what you're normally doing in any kind of like control panel, you're probably not going to get as best of performance unless you're doing it manually yourself. But where's the headroom? Where's the fun part? Where is the driver that's going to make my freaking GPU run cooler and actually run well? Well, this is where we see it. DirectX 11 by itself performs, literally outperforms, which is pretty good. So hardware accelerator off on the situation and you're going to start seeing a lot of fun things out. And that's consistent. What I saw across the board, we were getting now ultra. We'll look into that, the more 4K test of what ends up happening. And you'll see, yeah, it does beat it in the standard and hardware performance, but, you know, even with the hardware accelerator on in the old driver, it slaughters it, which is kind of nice. This is where you see the game over. Why they made this driver so heavy. Look at the Port Royal test. I mean, that's night and day in performance right over there. And that's basically what I saw. They got the headroom for DirectX 11 without the hardware accelerator on. Uh, we got ray tracing, which was happening before, which was getting extraordinarily hot temperatures. I had never seen it run that hot before, before the 455 series. So um, quite frankly, now it's actually at like nice 85 to 86, which isn't that bad. It does run optimal, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get my card back into a liquid metal state and I'm going to start testing it on the newer drivers and see if that helps out a lot since I already did it in the past. And now that I've narrowed down the issue of the washers that were bad in the very first portion of this being now uh, very safe to do. Um, so I'll actually get some really kick ass, like nice metalish, like non-electrical conductive something that's not going to freaking melt and be perfect for my gpu but everyone if you are new to the network you can always like share and subscribe there'll be newer tech projects that kind of roll out as i mentioned before i'll probably be covering what ends up happening with the day and a night effect of what that gpu of my 2080 ti since you're looking at the normal standards of what your what 30 70 now is pretty much your 2080 super so all right everyone have a very nice day if you're new to the network cheers like share and subscribe absolutely free helps me out as a creator and if you do today who knows maybe nvidia maybe jensing will actually send me a freaking 30 series card that'd be amazing but you'll have to subscribe to find out because i will totally talk about that if it happens but see you guys and gals in the near future have a nice day